cheap furniture. Nice game system. New job. Steady girlfriend. Wedding. Dog that serves as a practice child. Little kid. Little kids. Oh. Big kids. Big changes. <laughs> so, once a year, Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance checks to see if we're paying too much or covered too little. Find an agent and stop knocking on wood. Hello and welcome to RTC TV 4. Abby Malco here with Becky Malco at Tippecanoe Valley High School where the Vikings are taking on the visiting Winnemac Warriors. Becky, anything special so far? No? Nope. Right, Not got, right now. You got lineups for us? Yes. Give me Winnemac first. Winnemac's up to bat first. The first three batters for Winnemac is number four, Tyler Hintz. Number 15, Doug Mullins. And number 12, Jack DeGroote. Tyler Hintz takes the first pitch on the inside corner. Defense for Tippecanoe Valley here. <laughs> Who's on defense for Tippecanoe Valley? At first base, number two. Second baseman is number seven. Shortstop, number one. The third baseman, number three. Left fielder, number five. Center fielder, nine. And right fielder, eight. Behind the plate, we have number 15. And on the mound is number 10. Counts one and two to Hintz as he swings at a high fastball. And that'll be strike out and out number one of the game. This brings up baseman, Doug Mullins. Mullins up to bat. He's the third baseman for Winnemac. And rolling ground ball gets stopped in the grass. He will be tagged out halfway to first base. Did you see that one? It was going foul and it rolled back in. The there. grass forced it back in. Mm -hmm. So now this brings the third batter shortstop, Jack DeGroote, up to bat. Well, yeah, if it wouldn't rain, we're probably going to try it tomorrow night. Takes first pitch high and inside for ball number one. Same pitch for ball number two. Swing and a miss for strike one. But I mean, he can pull out a hundred acre field. Hi, pop fly back behind us here. That'll keep DeGroote alive in his count, which is now full. Bring your supper with you? No, I just pull it out. And swing and a miss for strike number three. That's three up, three down for the Tippecanoe Valley defense here. They will go into the dugouts to grab their bats, try to get one on the board. You're watching RTC TV 4. We'll be back.
A number to always have hit. Welcome back to the bottom of the first inning here. Winnemac, their first time on defense. Becky, defensive lineups for Winnemac. At first base, we have number 22. Second base, number 2. Third base, number 15. Shortstop, 12. Left field, number 7. Center field, number 4. Right, field, right fielder is number 34. Behind the plate is number 6. And on the mound is number 20. So first pitch in the dirt. The first three batters for Valley is number 10, Tucker Scholl, followed by number 5, Tanner Trapiti, and in the third slot, Alec Craig, number 1. The third pitch comes in for a strike, making the count 2-1. Ball outside, 3-1 count. Will Plank is the pitcher on the mound for the Warriors tonight. Ball four, and the leadoff batter for Valley, Tucker Scholl, will walk down to first base. That's a tough four ball walk there. I think there was one strike in that mix, but lots of balls for your first batter. He got down pretty early in that count. Now up to bat is Tanner Tripredi, number five. He is a freshman for Valley. Evens the count at one with a strike there to Trapiti. Bunt attempt. Makes count one and two. Fouls that off, yep, to the backstop. Tanner Trapiti is just a freshman for the Valley Vikings, and he has ha has an impressive batting average of a 316. Yeah, that is very impressive, especially for a freshman. Swing and a miss, but successful steal at second base. Tucker Scholl will be in scoring position now for the Vikings. Now batting for the Vikings, the shortstop, number one, Alec Craig. Now to bat number one, Alec Craig. He is a senior for Valley, and he leads the team with a 429 batting average, seven RBIs. He is the shortstop for the Vikings this game. And line drive will fall in just short of center field. Moves runners to the corner. Scholl on third base and Craig on first. This brings up the batter. Number 15, Adam Myers, also the catcher. Now batting the catcher. Number He's 15, leading the team in Adam RBIs Myers. with 15 and nine doubles. A double would be ideal here for Tippecanoe Valley. Get in a one run and move another runner. If he hits a double now, he will have two runs. 
And Scholl crosses the plate when the catcher throws down to get Craig at second. He goes on the release and is safe at home, so Tippecanoe Valley is on the board. One to zero is your score. Craig ran to second, looking at the catcher, egging him on, wanting him to make that throw so he could score his runner. He didn't care if he got out. He just wanted that yeah. run to score, so that was Making a nice a, play on the part. sacrifice, probably going to get in a rundown if he had to. Mm -hmm. The count for Myers, number 15, is now one and one. Still only one out, and he now has a runner on second base. Craig steals third base without even having to slide. Mm -hmm. Ball's in the dirt. You don't see that very often. Very impressive steal. Three one count, runner on third. This puts Myers in a good position. Not so much for Plank, who is on the mound. He right, definitely a hitter's count right now. Mm -hmm. Plank needing to find a strike off the zone. And he does as Myers swings at one that's at the letters. And that full count turns into ball number four. So no. once again, Tippecanoe Valley's with runners on the corners. Nice job by Myers there. He had just swung at a pitch identical, and he learned from that the last time and yes. got the walk off of that, especially with a 3-2 count. That's a nice job on holding on that and reading that. He's going to get a courtesy Running runner, space, Riley Weitzel. Riley Weitzel. Now it's about number three, Hunter Early, who is a senior third baseman for Valley. Early's up there in the top three of RBIs for Tippecanoe Valley and pretty good fielding percentage at third base with 875. That's saying something for the hot corner down there. For sure. High and inside, typical New Valley Steel second base, but not able to pull off the home and double steal that they were able to a few batters ago. One one count, one out here. Runners on second and third. Good scoring position for number three early. Big swing, but a miss on that low and outside pitch. I think Tippecanoe Valley getting a little antsy here. Plank not staying very close to the plate, and some of their strikes are pretty far out of the zone. Mm -hmm. Pop fly going to land right on top of the concession stand. We probably should be a little more heads up. There's been a lot of those yeah. straight ups and straight downs. As long as it hits the laptop and not me, I'm fine. I'm banking on you catching it, so. Well, <laughs> wouldn't hold your breath. <laughs> oh. That one got him right in the shoulder. Made my shoulder quiver. Yes. That loads up the bases on the dead ball for Tippecanoe Valley. This brings up number 2-0, Ross Paxton. Russ Paxton. Now the plate for the Vikings, a designated hitter. Number 20, Russ Paxton. He is the DH, so that's what his position is made for. He is also a freshman. Big situation for a younger yeah. player. He has a 267 batting average. I mean, first year... Yeah, it's pretty solid. Plank pitching smart, trying to get ahead in the count. Makes that first pitch strike pretty close. Mm -hmm. 
Winamax defense playing in in hopes of fielding that ground ball to get that force at four. But a big gap between the infielders and mm -hmm. the outfielders as there's a yep. lot of green space. Infielders going to need to come in hard on a drop one so they don't drop one in. Yeah. That's two strikes. Counts one and two. Just missing it, but nice swing that he's got as a freshman. Counts even at two and two. Pop fly, that one's going to go out of play. Close, high Close and on. inside. Could barely see space between <laughs> the ball and the jersey. Full count, base is loaded, just one out. Little duck snort will do wonders for Tippecanoe Valley here with runners on the bases. Paxton still battling. Plank doing a good job on the mound as well, not giving him anything too good. Full count, bases loaded. Oh, big swing and a miss. That's a big out for Winnemac. Plank wins that battle. Potentially going to. For gonna, the second out? Yeah, potentially going to get out of this jam here. Now batting the first baseman, number two, Lucas Walters. Another lefty, Lucas Walters, comes up to bat. Big cut by Walters, that first pitch. Fouling it off behind the backstop. That gives him an 0-1 count. Oh my goodness, and he stole home plate. <laughs> Did you see that? He left before the pitcher even. Yeah. Had a chance to throw the it. The was in mid stride. So that's a suicide squeeze if I've ever seen that one. That was... That was good. Alec Craig diving across home plate before the batter can even get out of the box. So both are safe. Craig safe at home. Walter safe at first base on his bunt. Winnemac not sure what to do with that now situation right there. That was a tough, that was a tough situation. Answer. That's, but a, that's well a lot executed. going on. Very much so. I feel like that was a count as a f steal to second, steal third, steal yeah, home. He, he just stole all three of those bases just like that. Now up to bat, number eight, Wes Melanson. And he is hit by and a pitch. another dead ball. That'll walk in a run. Plank looking to the dugout for some help here. Teammate Short Jack, stop. Jack DeGroote will come in to give some words of wisdom. Now batting for the Vikings, the second base number some seven, Keegan Larimer. Band practice going on behind <laughs> us here. Practicing for graduation, maybe? Oh, yeah, that could be. Question mark. Good call. Good, good assumption. Number seven, Keegan Larimer up to bat. This is the number nine batter for Valley. They are almost back to the top of their order in just the first inning. Three to zero is the score. Typical New Valley in the lead. Base is still loaded with two outs now. Plank finds the zone for strike number one. Two outs, just one out away from getting out of this jam if you're Winnemac. 
to the Canoe Valley wanting to keep the momentum here as they still have the bases loaded. Scoring three runs in this inning alone. 3-1 count. Plank not able to afford a ball four here unless he wants to walk in another run. All the bases are occupied. Yep. No room for a walk. And swing and a miss makes the count full. No other situation like a full count, two outs, bases loaded. Yeah, that'll put a little pressure on you. Long mm. fly ball to left field, and that will be caught by left fielder for Winnemac, Kyle Sass. So Winnemac heads to the dugout. A little damage control on the way for them. 3-0 to zero is your score. Tippecanoe Valley in the lead. You're watching RTC. Now pitching for the Vikings, number one, Alec Craig. Welcome back to the top of the second Present inning. Hitter, number 25, Carson Despot. Carson Despot up to bat now for Winnemac. He's the designated hitter. Tucker Scholl was pitching for Tippecanoe Valley, but Alec Craig is on the mound now, and that'll be out number one as the new shortstop. Tanner Trapedi will make out number one. So, quick pitching seven change for eight. Tip Canoe Four Valley. Number seven, Kyle Sass. Kyle Sass, number seven up for Winnemac. He is the left fielder. He had the third out there of the last inning to end that bases loaded jam. Yeah, bases loaded for quite a few batters, I think. Short ground ball hit to the third baseman on the run throw. Not able to get it, and it does go over the first baseman. So Sass will stay at second base. That was a nice effort by Early, the third baseman. Trying to make that on the run throw. He knew that that was his only chance of getting it out. Just a little too high there for the first baseman. Yeah, he needs to stay a little bit lower. Sidearm that. Sam Griffith is number two. He's up to bat now with one runner in scoring position for Winnemac. Nice breaking ball by Craig. Ball in the dirt evens the count at one. Foul ball back at the screen. Ball low and away evens the count at two. Foul ball just barely tipped back. Craig with some good movement on his ball here. 
Griffith just trying to stay alive, find the pitch he wants, just fighting off the ones until he gets his one. And that's a nasty pitch. That was a good one. That I was would a like nice pitch. to not see that one from back here. Good movement on that ball. So that's a strikeout in the first out of the inning. I'd rather commentate about that pitch than try and hit it. Than be in the box trying yep. to hit it. And now up is batter Ricky Stoll, number 22. First pitch strike. It'd be nice if Winnemac could get a run on the board here, take advantage of that overthrow and absolutely take advantage of the errors. Mm -hmm. They called that a ball. I thought he might have been called on the attempted swing, but that is not true. Foul back makes the count one and two. So that will be strike three, third out for Valley. When we come back, your Vikings will be up to bat. You're watching. Number 10, Tucker Shull. Welcome back to the bottom of the second inning here. Tucker Shull up to bat for the Vikings. And Will Plank still on the mound for Winnemac. And ouch. That ball comes right at the back of Shull. Hits him between the shoulder blades, but kind of close up to the, the neck. Vikings. That's Number scary. Five, Tanner Trapedi. This brings up Tanner Trapedi to the plate. Scholl is the leadoff batter for Valley, so we started off this inning at the top of the order as again as we did the first inning. Batting through the lineup once, that's not ideal for the other team. If I remember, Scholl stole second base last time. Last time. I think you are correct. It wasn't until Alec Craig who stole every single base. <laughs> Bun attempt as Shoal steals. He'll make it there in time.
Counts one and one. Swing and a miss for strike two. Trapiti stepping out of the box, knowing he shouldn't have swung it. That was a yeah. little high for him. The low pitched growl, I think, was our signal. <laughs> yeah. He was not satisfied with that. <laughs> Another swing and a miss on the same pitch. That'll be out number one. One runner in scoring position as Alec Craig comes up to the plate. Alec Craig had a number one, Alec Craig. fly ball line drive between left field, center field, left field and center field last time. Yep. Over the shortstop's head. Good memory. Thanks. Counts 2-0 and as Craig watches the first two balls go by. Three straight balls there for Craig. Plank saying, trying to stay in the outer parts of the zone, but not able to get a called strike here. Craig being patient. <laughs> Finds one he likes, drives it long into right center. Tyler Hintz just able to pick it up in time, but that'll be an RBI for Alec Craig as Scholl crosses home plate. The catcher Myers up to bat now for Tippecanoe Valley. Now batting number 15, Adam Myers. Is that on a 3-0 count? Um, I think it was. Plank just trying to look for that strike so he didn't walk him. I think got it in a little too, a little little too, too close. Yep. yep. Ground ball in the 5-6 hole. Not able to be reached by DeGroote. Craig's going all the way home. Going to have to slide, but he makes it there easily. And Myers walks on to second base with that double RBI hit. Sasson left field for Winnemac had a very a pretty nice throw, just not yeah, quite no, in time. Yeah, that was a good throw. I think once it hit the grass, it just slowed it down a lot. It, but the ball just died. Yep, yeah. it was a good throw, good play all around. So Riley Weitzel goes back to courtesy run for the catcher Myers. Hunter Early, number three, up to bat now for the Tippecanoe Valley. Plank trying to get ahead with strike number one here. <laughs> Counts 0 and 2 for the first time in a while. Early needing to battle here with a runner in scoring position. And big swing and a miss for Early. He heads back to the dugout, but brings up number 20, Russ Paxton. Now batting number 20, Russ Paxton. There we go. Nice deep fly ball. And it is dropped. It looked like that right fielder had it, but he just fell down, fell to his knees, and I think he lost it there. 
Yeah, that is Corey Howard of Winnemac going back on that tough ball. So another run for Tippic New Valley makes this score six to zero in the bottom of two with a runner on to first base and number two Walters up to bat. That was a clutch hit there by number 20, Paxton, who was just mm -hmm. a freshman. Yeah, absolutely. DH. Plank looks over to first to throw, try and catch Paxton off guard, but he makes it back to first base in time. Ball gets away from the catcher. Paxton makes it easily to second base. <laughs> Three straight balls to Walters here. Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Plank comes in with a strike, making it a 3-1 count. Try and work his way back here. Get out number three. Ooh. Another hit batter for Plank. Is that three? That is the third, yep. That's the first lefty he's hit. True. The other two were righties. Yep, you're right. One Mac's going to take a quick timeout on the mound. You're watching RTC TV 4. Wes Melanson. Welcome back to the top of the third inning. New pitcher coming in for Winnemac. After the timeout, this is number two, Sam Griffith on the mound for the Warriors.
counts 0 and 2 to West Melanson. Foul ball right back at us. I now have a couple rocks in my shoe after that. <laughs> Counts one and two on that high pitch. Hard ground ball into the 5-6 hole. Jack DeGroote's able to get over there and get the third out of the inning. So heading to the top of the third inning. Tippecanoe Valley will head out to defend their 6-0 run and lead here. You're watching RTC TV. We are back here with the Tippecanoe Valley Vikings versus the Winnemac Warriors. Winnemac is up to bat. Number 20, Will Plank, at the plate. Now pitching for the Vikings. He has a 1-0 count Trapedi. from Tanner Trapedi. There is another pitching change from for Valley here. Must be a new strategy for Tippecanoe Valley, changing the pitcher each inning. It's not such a bad theory. No. Making everyone see it. A different pitcher, but I would However, probably I would probably keep them two innings apiece and save your pitching staff a little bit unless they're trying to get them ready for sectionals coming up soon. That's especially because they've had some one, two, three innings, so they've only faced three of the nine batters right. in the lineup for Winamax. So if they go in for a couple innings, it'll still possibly just be the first time everyone's seen them. Right. Ground ball back to the pitcher. Crazy throw. But first baseman's able to snag it, so that'll be out number one. Now up to bat for Winnemac is number 34, Corey Howard, the right fielder for the Warriors. One-oh count. Pitch right down the pipe for strike number one. Oh, yes. 
Ground ball up the middle will be cut off by the shortstop. And that's out number two. Alec Craig, now the shortstop for Tippecanoe Valley. Was previously just the pitcher. Yes. Also our stealer of, of home base. Of, <laughs> yep. Could you give that back, please? <laughs> so finally the leadoff batter coming up again for Winnemac. This is only his second time up to bat. Tyler Hintz. And even though he has been to the plate twice, this is obviously a different pitcher, so it's almost as if it's new. Right. High fly ball in no man's land, but Craig beats the third baseman and the left fielder there on fire tonight. Not sure what he had for breakfast or lunch, but he should probably do it next time. <laughs> Score is 6-0 to zero here. Tippecanoe Valley Vikings in the lead of the Winnemac Warriors. You're watching RTC TV. Welcome back to the bottom of the third inning here. Number seven, Keegan Larimer up to bat for Tippecanoe Valley. This is their ninth batter, so we are one away from the top of the order again. For their so third time to go the... around. Ground ball to DeGroote at shortstop, and he's going to just barely get him out. Good leg out there by Larimer. So now we have number 10, number Tucker Scholl, which 10, is Tucker his Scholl. third at bat in the third inning, which is... Very unheard of. It would be fun, though, to bat once per inning. Yeah. I think more people would play baseball. A little, bit more, a little bit more confidence in yourself because yeah, exactly. you know you have a chance every inning. Exactly. Oh. High fly ball. Shortstop calls off the second baseman. DeGroote will get that for out number two. And that's good captain qualities there by the shortstop. Other than the center fielder, you have rain over all of the infielders to capture that ball. So good communication and out number two, making this possibly the first inning that Valley doesn't score in this game. I guess I know it's only the third inning, but they've scored three in the first two. Number five, Tanner Chapiti, up to bat, second batter in the lineup for Tippecanoe Valley. What, your sister crying? 2-1 count, two outs. Chapiti struck out last time. He has a 3-1 count. Sam Griffith on the mound for Winnemac. Swing and a miss for strike number two. 
making that a full count. This is the first time that these batters have seen Griffith on the mound. He's new pitcher as of half of last inning. Not even half, a third of the that, last that's inning. True. He got out that's number true. three. So first walk. And Alec Craig comes up to the plate. Definitely having a now good night plate, thus far on defense Alex and Craig. offense. Let's go, Craigie. I'm telling you what, I'm about to break the bank, dude. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give Ball gets away from the catcher, and just like that, Trapedi's in scoring position, so I might, might have spoken too soon by saying Tippecanoe Valley won't score this time, for the first time. Craig just needs to find a gapper. Trapedi will easily cross home plate. But she's had two solid hits, is two at bats. Griffith careful how he was pitching to Craig here with the 2-0 and o count, no strikes yet. <laughs> Keep in mind, you had a 3-0 count last time and still got a hold of one. Yes, yeah, you're right. Anything can happen. That's a sharp ground ball foul. Just foul. We figured he'd get candy, not candy. Good take on the inside corner there as it's now three and one. Craig looking for a hitter's pitch. And he finds it, hits it right at the Groot. And that will be out number three. Tippecanoe Valley still up six to zero, heading to the top of the fourth inning. You're watching RTC TV 4. We'll be back after this. For the Warriors, number 15, Doug Mullins. Welcome back to the top of the fourth inning here at Tippecanoe Valley High School. Number 15, Doug Mullins from the Winnemac Warriors is up to bat. While we have another new pitcher for the Vikings. Sorry, my bad. That is number 12, Ethan Yates. Ethan Yates, a different look for sure as he pitches... A pretty good off-speed ball that has some break to it. 
looks like it's coming in a little slow and then just dropping off. So it looks like it's right there and then. Like you didn't know. Yeah, hard pitch to get called for a strike as now the count's 3 and 0. But if you're a batter but killer and you, if you swing if at you it. swing at that one, that's not going to pan out very well for you. Four straight balls putting Doug Mullins on first base. Now up to bat for the Warriors is number 12, Jack DeGroot, senior, leading the team with a 635 batting average. Yikes. 32 RBIs, 14 doubles, five home runs. Pretty good, pretty good. See what he can do here, give <laughs> Winamac a little comfort, get a little, a few runs here and see what they can do. You know what else is pretty good? What's that? The smell of the concession oh, stand food. I was going to say something. Oh, a long fly Deep ball, ball. And I hits oh. the fence. Oh, Doug Mullins could have crossed home plate there. Not, not sure if it was going to be an error or not, but. That was a hard hit ball, just hit yeah, off that of one, the fence. Yeah, that one hopped the fence. I wasn't sure. My depth perception in baseball is I, not the same as softball. And I lose the ball. <laughs> so, I like props to you people I'm for like, being able to see the ball what? the whole time. I think that it's a home run. <laughs> nope, it didn't make it out of the infield. Okay, cool. Yeah. Now batting number 25, so, that is no outs with runners on second and third for Winnemac with 25. Carson Despa up to bat. Winnemac gaining a little momentum here. Two runners in scoring position. Carson, one of the bigger hitters when, uh, when we filmed the game against Rochester. He had a pretty good night. Yep. And that's that dangerous pitch. Another swing and a miss, two in a row there for Despot. Quick stat on Despot, though. He does lead the team in RBIs with 33. Oh. He could add to that. 33 RBIs. Holy moly. What's the next closest? Oh, Jack Deger has 32, so, I mean, he's not. It's not a big yeah, chunk. Yeah, I mean. But they both have quite a few. And Kyle Sass with 29 looking yeah. over at Tippecanoe Valley numbers. The highest is 15. 15, yep. So there's that nasty pitch we were waiting for. The off-speed lob that breaks at the now, end. Seven, Kyle Sass. Yates able to get that to fall in for a strike and Despot not sure what to do with it. So now up to bat, Kyle Sass. He hits a ground ball to Alec Craig at shortstop who gets him at first base, but he does get an RBI as Mullins crosses home. Winnemac able to get one on the board finally here in the fourth inning. And this brings Sam Griffith up to bat. Now batting number two, Sam Griffith. Pop fly way back. Catcher's going to run into the fence. I would advise that. Nice hustle. Happens. Good hustle for sure as that one goes out of play. That was through Griffith off there, I think. You see him lunging at the ball, not realizing how slow it actually is until you get in the box. Yeah, lots of off speed here. That's the power of having so many pitchers and being able to change every inning as you're throwing off your batters. Nice line drive over the second baseman's head by Griffith, which will score DeGroote. He will come in on his feet for the second run here for Winnemac. And could have been a closer play at home if the right fielder was able to throw it all the way through, but the mm -hmm. cutoff did try and make that quick transition and actually slowed down time. So DeGroote was able to cross. Like you said, the score is 6-2 to two now with Winnemac trailing only by four. Ricky Stoll, number 22 up to bat. And that pitch just looks so fat and juicy when it's coming in, it and it looks just right drops. There, yep. It's like it hits a wall and just drops. Yep. <laughs> Got to ask him what his tricks are later when I play wiffle ball next yeah. time. Yeah, just like falls off that table. Yep.
Counts two and two with two outs. Winnemac has two runs. I think the batter up to bat is number two. I'm just kidding. It's he not. is 22. Oh. <laughs> two, two, two outs. And that ball just outs. ruined it, so now it's full count. <laughs> oh, and on first was number two. I told you there's weird twos in baseball. Happens <laughs> all the time. Oh. oh. I thought he had that one, too. Uh, if yeah. I think you have it from back here, it's close. You're close. So good pitch outing there by Yates as Winnemac is able to score two runs. Score is 6-2 to two now. Tippecanoe Valley in the lead. Winnemac will head to defense. You're watching RTC TV 4. We'll be back right after this. Sander on a shot back, man. Just, oh, I mean, it was rolling. They were done. Welcome back to the bottom of the fourth inning. Six to two is your score. Valley Vikings in the lead. Adam Myers, the catcher, up to bat. I'd like to say who the pitcher is, but they've changed every inning. But for Winnemac, the pitcher's changed the stayed the same recently. This is Sam Griffith. Sharp hit ball off the bat of Myers, and that one will be just foul. Everyone in the Tippecanoe Valley dugout groans, hoping it was fair, because that one could have easily been a legged out double. To me, that's harder to judge in baseball because it's so far away. Yeah. And the ball's so small. I just feel like it, that's a hard that's a hard judgment for the umpire. Well, you can't be an umpire in baseball unless you wear glasses, so that okay. probably helps. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, it's a qualification. It's not. <laughs> it would help I didn't though. want to say that. It, I didn't want to say you were wrong, and then you'd be like, "No, it really is." No, and listen, then I like Brian down. asks silly questions all the time. Like one time he asked, "What's that white line for?" I said, <laughs> "The foul." <laughs> I said, "It's it determines if it's fair or foul," and I opened his brain to new horizons. That is awesome. It was awesome. I love teaching people new things. I do too. He's really nice. So full count here to Myers. Nobody on base. And he will battle once again. wonder if he's tired of hitting foul balls. Um, confession, I thought that was going to go behind us. Yeah, and that's it actually okay. went on the third baseline there. We'll just have so. you stick to numbers and people's names, okay. not where the direction of the ball is yeah. going. I kind of ducked. You don't I have really your glasses, no that's that. why you can't be That's here. what it is. And finally, after a long battling at bat, wonderful at bat by Myers, he draws the walk, heads to first base. The third baseman, Hunter Early, comes up to bat. Are you impressed? I don't have to look at the paper. If that makes you feel better about yourself, then yes. It does. Okay. Super impressed. Fly ball to right field, and 
<laughs> oh, that worked out. It ended up working out. It did end up so, working out. So right fielder drops the ball, but Myers came back to tag, and since the ball was dropped, it was a force out at second base, so he was out at second base. Since In his there was defense. No, he did it exactly how he yeah, needed to. The right fielder just accidentally played that well. Yeah. Either way, you would have had a runner on first base, and you would have had one out. So. He apparently just didn't want Myers on base no, anymore. No, he did not. So <laughs> they traded and early got to be on first base. So now we have number 20. Russ Paxton, freshman, DH. And early steals second base. Good read on that low dirt ball. Maybe it was a bad idea to keep him on first. <laughs> yeah. One oh count, one out. Way outside. Makes a count 2 and 0. They're quicker than Dixie Choppers. Blade speed wise? Yeah. I'm going to start changing my pulleys then. I never in my life. I'm looking at everybody's like the certified. Lawn care. Yeah. He stands on his roller. He's got a roller in the back. Oh, yeah. Four straight balls to Paxton, putting runners on first and second with just one out. Stepping to the plate for the Vikings, number two, uh, Lucas Walters. This was just me messing around. I got roller things for free out here. Oh, oh, yeah. Up to bat now for Tippecanoe well, Valley. I tried to mount it on my deck. Number two. Awesome. Lucas Walters, first so baseman. Counts 0 and 1 with one out. Hunter early on second base. The bunt attempt is no good as it goes foul. But Tippecanoe Valley has runners on first and third. I believe Walters was one up to bat when he bunted for the squeeze yes. play. You are correct. If I were him and see my teammate running at me, I am probably not going to get that bun down because um, I panic. <laughs> probably going to have a heart attack and then not be able to run. Ball outside, making it one and two. It was off of an old disc I bought and cut up. It stole parts off of it. I need to go see it. Oh, yeah. Hard ground ball, and oh, could have been an out at second base, but Mullins drops it. So now the bases are loaded once again for Tippecanoe Valley. This brings up number eight, West Melanson. And Tippecanoe Valley is, it was a key running heads up by uh, number three early. It, leaving him on base was a mistake because he took off and stole third on that, yeah. taking away that force at third base, yep. making DeGroote have to go to second. And I don't think that was his original plan, kind of throwing him off there. So that original hesitation made yeah. him a little late, and then you had the dropped air. So, yeah, Valley doing a lot of things right tonight, forcing Winnemac to not really be able to be in charge. They're just kind of responding. Making them make the plays and yeah. putting them in kind of a tough spot. Yep. One out, bases are loaded. Oh, ground ball up the middle, hard off the glove of DeGroote, almost off the bill of the hat of the pitcher. That was close, bounced right over his head. Had to duck over that one. Now batting for the Vikings, number six, Riley Whitesell. Now up to bat for the Vikings is number six, Riley White. So he is new batter here. He's going to be batting in the place of Keegan Larimer. He has been pinch running throughout the course of this game. 
He comes up to bat in a nice solid line drive over the shortstop's head, which is going to score. Oh, two. Sorry for the hesitation. I didn't know if number two, Walters, was going to get in there or not, but that did score two runs, making the score nine to two. Nice hit by Weitzel. Number 10, Tucker Shaw. Now up to bat, number 10. Tucker Scholl, who is the leadoff batter for Tippecanoe Valley. Still only one out with runners on first and second. Valley going through this lineup pretty quickly. And stolen third base already. Oh, that's heartbreaking. So he stole third base. Wait, just oh. a second. This is going to get confusing. <laughs> so he stole third base. Then he got yelled at for going to third base. But since the run or the batter got hit by the pitch, he automatically gets to be at third base. So we just had a little go around there. I honestly thought he didn't pull back the bunt. And, and it hit the bat. No. Nope. Yeah. That kind of hit like his. Thank front goodness he has chest. that uh, thing across his the face. face he's, mask. That's the second time he's been hit, and yeah. it's been close both times. So once again, Tippecanoe Valley with the bases loaded, nine to two here. In the bottom of the fourth inning, up to bat now. Ethan Yates, who is hitting in the spot of Trapiti. He was our pitcher that past inning. Not yep. too confident he'll be our pitcher the next inning. Nope, nobody's, considering nobody's the, stayed twice. Considering the change. He did a nice job throwing the Warriors off there with his different speed. Nice block there as the umpire pats the back of Winamax catcher, he just saved a run and probably the shin. I was going to say, the umpire is saying thank you thank for you <laughs> for saving my shin bone there. I know I have guards, but it still doesn't feel good when they get hit. Whoa, that's a shot through the 5-6 hole. That'll easily bring in one run. They're going to not try for two. So 10-2 to two here is your score. Tippecanoe Valley in lead with hot hitter Alec Craig up to bat now. Alec Craig is the shortstop for Not Tippecanoe canoe right, right now. He also had an Alec inning Craig. at the mound. Like we said, he's still home plate, two for three. Nice catch out, in, out at shortstop. High fly ball going back into left field. It's going to be a sack fly as the left fielder, Eric Kyle Sass, easily has the handle on it. So that will bring Weitzel across the plate in just two outs now. Weitzel came in and pinch hit for Keegan Larimer, and he did a nice job of getting two RBIs and scoring himself. Yeah, we had a little bit of a technical difficulty with the camera glitch there, but during the camera switch, you could see that there's a nice hit, and you could see the Valley players crossing home plate. Shot up the middle by Myers. That didn't touch ground till it hit the grass. That'll be another RBI. And number 10, Tucker Scholl, will cross home plate. So runners on second and first here for Tippecanoe Valley with two outs. Hunter early up to bat again in this inning. Mm -hmm. Remember, he was the first batter. So six runs so far in this inning. 12 to 2 is your score. I would start I to be the good I would start 20 foot away and just keep piling and rolling Another and hit batter, man, I think this that's, is is that his second time being hit? I believe um, it is actually. He was hitting that. Has this been over five batters hit for Tippecanoe Valley? Oh, because is that the second one this inning? Yeah, it's for sure the yeah. second one this inning because it was uh, two batters. He's been hit ago. twice. I think the number 10 was hit twice, and there was another one in there too. I know so. uh, the first pitcher hit because there's a handful of batters yeah. himself. So, Tippec nope. Winnemac is going to take a quick timeout here, and so will we. You're watching RTC TV 4.
Now batting for the Vikings, number 20, Russ Paxton. We are back here after the momentary timeout. Winnemac has put in a new pitcher, number 16, Gabe Hoffman. He will start his pitches off here to number 20, Russ Paxton. DH for Tippecanoe Valley. The score is 2-12, to 12 and the bases are still loaded with two outs. Nice swing by Paxton. That ball will go to the back <coughs> fence for a foul ball. Little sunshine peeking out of the clouds now on a mostly overcast game here this afternoon. One, two is the count. Big inning so far by Valley. It is not over yet. They still have one out to give. But they have scored six runs here. A series of a few errors by Winnemac and then some heads up plays in base running by Tippecanoe Valley. Another hit by pitch. Hit by pitch. That is yes. And this time it walks in a run. Mm -hmm. So Yates, <clears throat> excuse me, Yates crosses the mound, not the mound, but the plate, bringing up number two, Lucas Walters. Just two outs here. Winnemac one away from getting out of this inning. Ball inside. <laughs> Evens the count at one on that strike. Fly ball to center field. That one's gonna drop in for a hit. Hint's not able to get there. That brings Myers and Early across home plate, racking up the score to 13 to 2. 14. 14 15. 15. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I think that is Early's second time scoring this inning. Yes, I think you're right. correct. Wes Melanson. Up to about now is number 9. I am sorry, number 8, Wes Melanson. Foul ball back right at us. Abby jumped a little bit. I didn't jump at all. <laughs> Not for a second. Uh, oh, one, two outs. After that last hit, the bases are not loaded anymore. First base is not occupied. We have runners on second and third, though. 15 to two. First two innings, Tippecanoe Valley scored three runs. They were held to zero in the third inning and have busted out nine runs this inning alone, but still working as they only have two outs here. That makes it a 3-1 count with that ball. It is not as big of a deal if he does walk in this time because, as I said, first base is open. But who's on deck? I don't know. I'm asking. Um, on deck is... Oh, Riley Weitzel. He had the two RBIs last time he was up to yeah, that in this off inning. Yeah, this pitcher. Yep. Foul ball back behind us. Hoffman just trying to get the last out here of this inning. It's a tough situation to come into. Bases loaded, two outs. It's not ideal, obviously. Yeah, it doesn't leave you with very much uh, wiggle room. That's for sure. Wes Melanson walks on that one to load the bases. Bringing up number six, Riley Weitzel. First pitch is a ball. 
I would like to have it hot before I get cattle. Yeah, you do the one. I got two hot. The donkey dude, he gets right up against there and he pushes back so far. You guys hear that stuff? Tackle dude. Two Two one, nice pitch by Hoffman. Finding the zone on that last pitch. Ground ball chopper to DeGroote at shortstop. He makes the throw and the pick. Nice pick by first baseman Stoll for Winnemac. And that's out number three. Winnemac got out of the inning. If Tippecanoe Valley can hold them this next inning, the game will be over. Score is 15 to 2. Tippecanoe Valley in the lead. You're watching RTC TV. And we are back. Winnemac Warriors up to bat. Leading off this inning is number 20, Will Plank. The score is 15 to 2. So for the game to keep going and Winnemac to continue to have a chance, they need to score, what is that, four runs? Yes, ma'am. Or the 10 run, run rule will be in effect. They could score three. <clears throat> nope. Oh, yeah. They could score. Uh, no, they have to score. I think they have yep. to score four. Because you're up by 10 and the game's over. So yep. the... Pitcher now for Tippecanoe Valley is Adam Myers, who was previously the catcher for the first four innings. So that's a switcheroo if I've ever seen one. High fly ball to center field. Looks like it's going to be easily tracked down and a nice sliding play. Not sure who the center fielder is this that inning, but I wouldn't be. The leadoff batter, Tucker Scholl, who was the pitcher in the first inning. Yes, very good sliding play there. Brings up the previous pitcher for Winnemac, number 16, Gabe Hoffman. Fly ball right back at us. Gives a little jiggle to the camera. Grass, 
percentage wise I mean, like, <laughs> until you get them up on full feed and you know, let them eat all they want but and actually at that I don't even do that high pitch first. makes the count two and one with one out so they barely clean up and then that way they're coming back hungry and they'll eat more so if they have a full feeder all the time they won't eat as much and they'll gain faster Nice snag by the catcher. If I am correct, the leadoff batter for Winnemac is on deck, and this will only be his third time up to bat. Yeah. Is that right? Which is normal in a in a game, but if, yeah, yeah. Um, Tippecanoe Valley batted around so many times by scoring 15 runs. They batted that many times in three innings. And swing and a miss for strike number three and out number two of this inning. Tyler Hintz is the next Not batter right. up, trying to keep this game alive here by getting on base since there are two outs. 15 to two is your score. Tippecanoe Valley has the lead. And he gets hit by a pitch, so he is able to extend the life just a little bit. Bringing up number 15, Doug Mullins. Now batting number 15, Doug Mullins. Wild pitch by Myers, putting Hence on second. Still two outs. Runner is in scoring position now with Mullins up to bat. Mullins has a season 12 RBIs. First strike on the batter counts two and one. Ground ball to the third baseman early. They're going to try and run down hints at two, and nobody's there. Ooh, to me, two outs. Ground ball to third you base, you just go one. You go first, you finish the game. That was a nice job by Hintz to get back to second base. Yeah, knowing there nobody. Was not a, yep, knowing nobody was behind there him. There's no one on second base there to catch that ball when yep. early threw it. Two outs in the game, go to first. <laughs> now up to bat number three batter Jack DeGroot, the powerhouse here for Winnemac. 32 RBIs, as I stated earlier, with a 635 batting average. He gets thrown a ball one. Probably wanted to pitch around him a little bit, knowing his... Ability. High fly ball to center field. Oh, I lied. Two right behind second base. My depth perception is a little off. Alec Craig will catch that for out number three, which will end the game. You have been watching RTC TV. Thank you. Score is 15 to two here at Tippecanoe Valley High School. Tippecanoe Valley victorious over the Winnemac Warriors. Abby Malco and Becky Malco. Thanks for watching RTC TV4. We'll see you next. First apartment. Dog named Bella. Boyfriend. TJ. With the sweet ride. And the bad secrets. Exit TJ. Hey, it's Eric. Wedding. Eric Jr. New house. Luckily, once a year, Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance checks to see if we're paying too much or cover too little. Find an agent and stop knocking on wood.